Hello, dear students, once again. Um, this is our third lesson in the Python course. And uh, after checking your uh, homework practice, I decided that you have a really different level of uh, knowledge, how to program, how to use Python. And according to this information, I decided to stay one more lesson on the theme of data types in Python and uh, delay uh, the function co course for the next lesson. So for today, we will additionally talk about Python data types. So let's start with screen sharing. Okay, here we are, I fix annotation uh, functions for the zoom and can draw now not only on the whiteboard but on the uh, CLI interface too. So Python data types, once again, we have built-in data types. We already know, uh, I think, a lot of them with exception of mapping types. So first of all, we have special data types like none. There is actually another special data types, but we do not consider them. There, there is, for example, not implemented data type and uh, for example, dot, dot, dot data type, but we are not interested in of them in this course. So we must know that there is special data type none that we can use. There is a class of uh, data types called bool. So this is a Boolean uh, values and it has two uh two types so it's true and false we have another data type that we already know numeric in numeric we have three participants so this is integers plotting numbers and we do not use them, but they exist. This is a complex numbers. If you know what is this, this is a, uh, a set of the numbers in mathematics that has a real part and imaginary part. So uh, numeric data types in Python is uh, created according to the mathematical sets of the numbers. Okay, after that, we have another class of data types. We call them sequences. And we have talked about strings So in Python. Maybe it's better to call them str. So strings, tuples, and list, lists. Okay. After that, we have another class. We have different types of sets. There are actually two of them. There is a set that we are talked about and frozen set. Um, so frozen set. The difference between set 
and the frozen set is the exactly as between tuples and lists. So set is mutable. We can change the uh, content of the each set. And frozen set is by the definition unmutable. And uh, not covered yet, we have mapping times, mapping types. And then the, this is a dictionary and we will talk about it today. Okay, this is a over, overview of our, why I can't, built-in that data types in Python. So the thing is that we have only them and other data types can be constructed using them. So we can, in, in the, uh, in our course, we will learn how to create our own data types. So we, user data types uh, that will use uh, these built-in data types inside as a, um, uh, as a fill of, of the uh, our own uh, objects. So um, I have uh, an issue last time with the difference of the conditional operations. So like uh, some kind of integer value and Boolean value, if we use them in the conditional statement, like a condition and do something. And uh, if you remember, when I try to um, understand the equality of some integer uh, type and Boolean type. And of course, I think it, it is uh, important to understand what's going on. So the thing is that uh, we must to understand how implicit type conversion works in Python. So what, what is implicit and explicit uh, type conversion? We already know the explicit type conversion. So why, why have this? Okay, I will just want to create a new list. No. Um, so, what we use to explicitly convert the type of the um, of the object explicit so assume we have one so this is a literal and uh, it means the digit one if we want it to be a float number we can use a float function and uh, literal one inside that it will return us the object 1.0 and this is a float object we can create a bool object from this explicitly and it will return us the true as we described on the last uh, lesson the same is with strings for example we have literal that has 18.2 and we want to create float from this yes we can do it and it will return 
the float object. Uh, how works implicit conversion? Implicit. Assume we have plus operator and we have two uh, objects uh, in this operator. We have one here and 2.0 here. The implicit type conversion in Python convert each type to the higher hierarchy of the complexity. And here we want to understand our hierarchy. So the The simplest uh, types are none and bool types. They are the simplest one. And next we have integers. Next we have floating points. Next we have complex numbers. Next we have strings. And uh, mm, things become uh, more complicated and if we will uh, proceed with this because after that we have sequences mapping and some some other things but some operations will not work if we use for example uh, uh, tuple with one two uh, plus operator and two. Let us uh, just test this. So we have Python, we create some tuple one, zero, and we want to add a number three. Yes, this is an error because we use uh, data types that can't be inside one place plus operator. But assume we have a list one, two, and we want to add another list to this. For example, tweet, uh, two and, and three. It will return us concatenated list because the plus operator works for two uh, objects which are the same type the same lists, but it's not true for the tuples because tuples are unmutable types. So if we want to add tuples with each other, it, it will, ah, okay. This is true for the tuple, but we will create a new tuple, the new concatenated tuple. So the, the same things, if we have, ah, okay. Very interesting when we have tuple here and list on the other side. Another error because we can only concatenate tuples together, not tuple plus list. So implicit type conversion, it works to the uh, from low hierarchy to the high hierarchy. So if we have a true plus one, the result will be two because we uh, plus operator will try to convert this type to the higher hierarchy. So let's test this. Uh, true plus one, it returns two. What will be if we use true plus 1.0, 2.0? So it gets the uh, object with the low hierarchy, hierarchy priority and uh, convert it to the high 
hierarchy. And the same thing uh, will be when we use uh, not conditional, um, uh, or, or ordering expression of sorry, comparisons. So when we use comparisons, works the same thing. So in the last lesson, I asked what will be if we have uh, minus 12 and 1.0. Not, not 1.0, I asked about true. Is it equal to true? So this is a comparison operator uh, called equal. So how it works? At first, it will convert the Boolean object to the highest hierarchy, to the integer object, and it will be one. And after that, it will uh, compare minus 12 and one, and the result will be, of course, false. But uh, we have another thing. We have a conditional statement if, and we use minus 12 here. And we say, if minus 12, please print true. And it prints true. Why uh, we have this? Uh, the difference is that this is a comparison operator. And this is conditional statement. And this is a conditional expression here. The result of the conditional and logical expression can be only true or false and how it works. So if we have, uh, for example, such expression, what will be if we have uh, explicit time conversion of minus 12? And what will be the type of this? Yes, it's bool. And what will be the result of this? It will be a true. How it works exactly as I uh, said to you the last time. So here is the documentation about Boolean operations. Um, assignments, conditional expression here. Uh, so th this uh, paragraph, I want to increase the font. So the following values are interpre interpreted as false. So as false, I interpreted none objects. So this is a one instance of none objects. Every numeric zero for all types. So if we have integer zero, if we have plus minus a float zero, and we have every complex zero, it will be interpreted as false. Empty sequences, empty strings, empty containers, tuples, lists, dictionary sets, and frozen sets, if they are empty, a conditional statement will interpret this as false. And all other values are true. The rules are very simple. So uh, please, uh, ask your question if you do not understand the difference between comparison here and using the conditional statement here. I want to ask uh, in which concrete cases the implicit converter won't do the conversion. Uh, if we um, neighboring in the higher hierarchy um, types. So in this case, if these types, uh, if are they uh, neighboring, the implicit converter can do the conversion. And if they are too far away from each other, it can do the conversion. No, no. Uh, where is my scheme? So from here, to here, we will always have implicit conversion because these are simple types. But uh, when we go to the 
sequences types, set types, and uh, mm, mapping types uh, as dict, the things get more complicated. And I, I think I will cover it uh, today about comparisons of lists and tuples. So the thing is uh, here, implicit conversion work always. And here we can have errors when we use different types in operators. It depends on the operator. So for, for example, we can compare uh, tuple and tuple um, lexicographically, but can't compare tuple and list lexicographically. Maybe we, we do not, uh, want to think about it because it's uh, not very common in use. So the thing is that we must understand uh, this conversion, how uh, the simple types convert to each other. And if we uh, understand this, we can create, for example, our operators for uh, uh, for conditional uh, statements and for comparisons for our types that we, we will create. Um, I, I don't know if I answer your question or no, please say something. Understood, thank you. Okay. So I, I just want you to understand the difference that here, this is a comparison, comparison operator, and here we have, uh, wait, wait, wait. Here we have a conditional statement F and the conditional statement of course can contain inside the uh, comparison operator. So the thing is that here at first we will compare minus 12 and true and it will return false here. So it will be equal to if false, because once again, it will convert true to the one and minus 12 is not equal to one. But if we have minus 12 here, it will convert it, N not convert it will be like this. And we know that each non-zero element in numbers is true, so it will uh, it will run all the code here. Actually, we prefer to use this variant of conditional statement. So, okay, I think I want to use text editor. So oh, I, I want to talk about different types of the conditional statements. So we have talked about the classical variant of the uh, conditional statement. So uh, it looks like if condition one, then do something one, a leaf condition to do something to and else do something else. So this is a classic variant of the conditional statement and 
we must remember the uh, set of the variants that we have dissected with conditions. So this is condition one, we use this. Condition two, we use this. And else we use what, what else we have in the sample space. Uh, the thing is that there are another syntaxes for a conditional statement in Python. Uh, for example, we can use some short things. For example, if condition, do something. Um, Maybe some example where we can use this. Uh, assume that we have some list of numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we want to print all uh, numbers that are divisible by three, for example. So we use for cycle for element in uh, list A. If element is divisible by three, so this is mean uh, just want to use mouse. It means if element, uh, the residual of division by three is equal to zero, this is the same that uh, the element is divisible by zero. So please, in that case, print element. Okay, I think that's all. And can we use this type of notation with uh, a leaf and else? Yes, like... yes, mm -hmm. yeah. If uh, the thing is that in this uh, type, the body of code uh, consists only of one string and we can use it if we have the uh, simple, uh, simple line of code inside. So, for example, a leaf element is divisible by two. Print. Oh. Uh, this is a formatted string, so I use um, special sign and element inside. So it will return elements that are divisible by three and exclamation mark and element if they are divisible by two. Okay, let's... Can you repeat this please, didn't catch. Okay, just... I'll block the formatted string. Just show the result. Uh, oh, the condition is not true. I will um, say a few words about formatted strings soon. J just try to understand that this is work. Uh, it returns uh, exclamation mark and two if element is divisible by two. This is just an element if it is divisible by three. Once again, element uh, four is divisible by two and we have exclamation mark. And here we have six. The thing is that six uh, was returned, uh, was printed only here. It is divisible by three and by two, but we exit the conditional statement by the first condition. So these conditions are intersected here. So six is divisible by two and by three, but we will, uh, we will return from the conditional statement by the first condition that is true, okay? 
Can I can I ask? Uh, you wrote that uh, um, the element divisible by three or divisible by two, but it's equal zero. I don't understand why it's equal zero. Okay, how how this um, expression works? We have an operator percent. That means, uh, please give me the residual by the division. So if we, for example, have 4% uh, percent, uh, 3, it will return the residual uh, of division 4 by 3, and it will equal to 1. OK? Mm -hmm. For example, we have uh, 6, and we want to have residual by division by 3 it will be zero because six is divisible uh, by three. So six okay. is equal to multiply three. And if yeah. we ask if it is equal to zero, it will return us true. Okay, okay, understand. Okay. So the, the same thing if we will have another condition for else here, if we have only one string, we can use it just like this. Uh, this is a special word for do nothing. So pass is the code block that uh, does nothing. Okay, we, we use it, for example, when we want to create, when we want to create some function, we have uh, a name for a function. We know arguments for a function, but we do not want to implement this function yet. And we can create here a pass. So this is just a template for the function. Uh, it will create the, this function, but this function will do nothing. Just it will have... Uh, Actually, we even can uh, evaluate this function using arguments, but it will do nothing. So it will create instance, but uh, th th this is uh, just a placeholder, nothing else. Very uh, useful thing when you prototype your program. So you first of all think about your functions and after then that you implement the inner code okay uh, this is uh, uh, one yeah. okay can you please clarify uh, the meaning of the letter f uh, we just specified type of um, string with quotes uh, why we need f too okay okay the meaning of typo uh, i i think I will send you a description because this is a very useful and you will use it a lot in your practice. But to show you how, how to work with it, this is a, a way to format your string, to, to format your output. Uh, so, Assume that we have some variables. For example, name equal Anton. And I don't know, weight equal 85. And we want to have a string with some format inside that use uh, some, some variables. For example, I, I want to uh, create string that will looks like uh, patient name uh, semicolon. Here we have name and his weight, some number. We can do it in Python very quickly using the formatted strings. So to use it uh, there are a lot of uh, notations but one of them and one of the uh, simplest one is f strings 
this is a special symbol f before the string literal that uh, means please uh, use format strings uh, notation and here we can have a uh, text inside so how, how on patient name semicolon space and in the curved uh, parentheses we can use our variables from the previous code so i will have name here after that i have comma uh, wait this is just a text wait not a name of the variable but in the curved brackets i will have a wait and it returns the formatted string okay okay thank you yeah it's but, clear thanks uh first uh, variable name uh, equal anton this anton it's like row strings uh, or uh, if uh, error omitted it means row strings or row it's uh, like another specified type uh here we have just a string so name is a string variable, a string type, and weight is an integer type. So we can use strings here. We can use uh, floats, integers, even none type, I think. So let's create. Uh, mm. I understand the, the, the meaning of F, but uh, it was um, prefixed R in um, text from homework but and i not understand the meaning of r prefix r yeah it's mean r. like row, row strings <laughs> mm. okay, could, yeah. could, could you please ask this question in chat after the lesson because i can't understand what we are talking so okay thank you okay uh, another conditional statements very quickly uh we can have so uh we can have a ternary operator for conditions how it looks like we can no once again we want to iterate our uh, this list for element in a uh, and we can use ternary operator for conditional uh, for conditions please print us element if element more than uh, uh, for example three Okay, it's not working. It works on only in list comprehensions, but look at this. Else, uh, else zero. Python, if. So what's going on here? I said, please print us element if this element uh, more than three, else zero. So print element or zero uh, depending on the condition inside. So this structure, we called it ternary, ternary operator for con conditional statement. And it consists of... Uh, three parts it consists of uh, value one if condition else value two very useful to use in such small strings when you want to do something or something else depends on the condition inside and it's called ternary operator Okay, if you if you are familiar with other 
program languages, you know that they have such thing as switch cases. Here, I think after some version in Python 3, we have the same thing called match, match. Uh, how it works, it has such syntaxes as match element and then case to print to case three print three case four print What's wrong? Much. Oh, the thing is uh, that much statement uh, will be impl will will. Uh, not will, was implemented only in Python 3.10. So this is a very new function. And I think that I have Python 3.9. Very interesting, but it's a new feature and you can use it if you have Python 3.10. So it's like uh, matching the value of the variable to the conditions. So each iteration of the for cycle, it will compare the value of object L with uh, our cases, with two, three, and four. And uh, it will uh, evaluate the uh, code inside this condition. So li like switch in C++, for example. Um, so if it, <clears throat> is it um, taking the, compounds from the list and then transform them into the integer and the case is mean integer or it's just following the order of the list and in the case of order ordering number of index of element it print two three and four so the thing is that we have a list with integers the list is an iterable object as i taught to you like a polymer of monomers. With for cycle, we iterate our iterate uh, object and our element will be at first one and then two and then three from left to right one by one. And uh, it will be an integer because here we have integers. And each step we will uh, compare is it one uh, equal to two or equal to three or four? No. So next step, is it uh, is the element uh, equal to two? The second element, yes, equal. We will print two and uh, go the next iteration. After that, we have three. So this is just a iteration over the list, element by element. And on each iteration, we will have our comparison. Okay, thanks. And uh, it could be strings in statement case. Any yes, object? Yes, of course, mm -hmm. any object. Even uh, complicated ones like your own objects. So uh, let's go uh, further. I want to talk about range functions. So in your practice, I have uh, talked. Uh, about range. So this is a function, for example, range three list. It will return us list consists of zero, one, and two. What is the range, uh, range function? It's a very useful function that I think 
we will use all our practice. So range. If we create an object A of range, what will be this A? The answer is this is a complex object calls generator. And what uh, this generator generates? This function range is the generator of arithmetic progression. And we uh, must uh, remember three, uh, three arguments of the range function. We can remember them as SSS. This is start, stop, and step. I think and I believe that all of you know what is the arithmetic progression. Arithmetic progression is the sequence of numbers. When we have some initial number, we have uh, the number that we add each step, uh, for example, D, and we have number of steps. And we have all those formulas to some arithmetic progression to have a, a an element. So it will be a zero plus D multiplied by N. Okay. What is the beauty of the generator? The thing is that we can create the sequence of numbers without using any random access memory. So our RAM will be clean and we will have this object that we have used in our uh, code. So how, how it works. For example, I, I just search how many atoms we have in the universe. And I Google that we have between 10 and 78 degree to 10 and 82 atoms in the universe. Let's create a generator of arithmetic progression. So A is equal to range from one to 10 in power 82. It works. We already have A and A is a range between one and one with uh, 82 zeros. So please give us the first number from A, it's one. The second number, it's two. The 10,000th number, it's 10,001. Please give us the 10 in the power of 82 minus one. Uh, not minus one, actually minus two. This is the last number of the progression. So we, we can have uh, by index any number in the range that consists of uh, uh, elements that, that uh, the count of these elements more than atoms in our universe. And we do not need uh, any additional space in our memory because this is a mathematics. This is a generator that will generate a number by your will. And how we use this? Assume we want a list from one to 10. We can use it, we can do it using just a, a range function. So L is equal list. So we use list function to create a list from the generator object. List from range start is equal to one and is equal to 11. This is a syntax. And this is our list from one to 10. How 
uh, to understand the start stop step. There are uh, different uh, usage of the range. If we use a range from one number here, for example, range 10, it will be only stop argument because uh, uh, start will be by default zero and step will be by default one. So it will return us all numbers from zero to nine. The rule is that stop is always equal to actual stop minus one. You can think that it is very uncomfortable, but it will. It it was done by purpose to use it with length of something. So assume we have uh, a string a b c d, and we use please give us a range from length of the string it will be the same as a range of one two three four of four and it will return us zero one two and three and these are exact the indices of the string and we can use them to operate with the uh, characters from string so this was a range with only one argument. Range with two arguments. Range first and second. It will be the range function with start and stop. So the step with by default equal to one here. And uh, if we have range from a to B, it will return us A, not list, it's a generator. List will be if we use additional list here. So A, A plus one, A plus two, and the last element will be B minus one. Okay, Th this is uh, how we use it. And the last one, is if we use range with two, three argument, we use all SSS, start, stop, and step. So for example, range from one to 11 using step two will return us one. 1 plus 2, 3, 3 plus 2, 5, 7, and 9. The next will, uh, will be 11, but 11 is more than uh, stop minus 1. So it will finish on 9. Uh, we can check it. So range from one to 11 with step two. Okay, the step can be not uh, only positive integer, but for example, uh, negative. And we can use it from start 11 to one and it will return us all numbers uh, in the descending order. I think uh, you can read about this more on those uh, materials that I have sent to you. Okay, uh, I have time for the dictionary, but... Uh, 
few more words about uh, list unpacking. I think this is an important because uh, it's a moment that are commonly used in the code of another pro programmers. And if you will read some uh, code, you must know how to use uh, the asterisk notation. So I, I have talked about it, but once again, assume we have a tuple T that is equal to one, two, three, four, five sequence. Uh, we know that we can use the multiple assignment like this. A, B is equal to one and, and two, and they all uh, will be assigned. So A will be one, B will be two. But what if we want to use a is equal to one, B is equal to two, and the rest is equal to these uh, elements from tuple. We can uh, do it like this. A, B, rest is equal to our tuple. And what is the rest here? The rest is the list of uh, rest elements. We can use it in another, order so like this rest a b and in this case a and b will be four and five and the rest numbers will go to the least rest so this is uh, using the asterisk like list unpacking or tuple unpacking for example, another uh, example, we have tuple T, ah, we already ha has it. We have tuple T and we want to print it. So if we print T, it will print it with uh, parentheses and commas. Assume that we want to print all elements divided by semicolon like this. What we can use, we can print T zero, uh, T one, T two with separator equals semicolon. Uh, what's wrong? Oh, okay, another comma. But it's too long. Instead of this, we can use the notation of unpacking. So we unpacked T here and use separator with semicolon. And it works. What returns the unpacking? Um, actually, I, I can't show it like, like here. I only can't show it with print. So it returns each element. So this is it's not equal from Python, it's equal for you. So th this is the same expression. It like sets to print element by element what we have inside. Okay. So this is the same. Asterisk mean, uh, please unpack our container. We have another notation to unpack mapping containers with two asterisks, but to go with this, we must know what is mapping. And uh, I think I want to say something about list comprehension. List, no, write it here. Because uh, many of you already use list comprehensions. And uh, I think, Another part of our class wants to know how to do it too. So this format element for element in such iterate in, in, in any iterable 
this is an example of the least comprehension expression, how it works. For example, we want to generate a list with numbers from some range uh, that are mm, multiplied by itself, for example. So we, we can write it right here, like here. X multiplied by X for each X from range from one to 11. So <laughs> for X, of course, in, in, oh, okay. It's not semicolon, it's comma. Uh, and L will be the quadrats of each number. We can um, make uh, more complex, uh, for example, using the uh, condition here. So please create such list of quadrats, but only if x divisible by two. And now we will have only quadrats of uh, odd numbers. So this statement, this expression, we call the list compre comprehension. And uh, I will send you a document where it's described because I think to understand how it works, you must have practice with it. So at first you read, and then you uh, solve some task using this. And after that, you remember how to use it. Okay, and another thing that I want to mention that this statement is not a list comprehension. This is a generator, like a range, but this is a generator of specific numbers. It will generate numbers uh, like this. So exactly these numbers, but this is a list. It is stored in random access memory. And this is a generator. It's like a formula. It's not... Uh, stored somewhere in memory. So, okay, okay, of course, formula is stored, but the values of this formula not stored. The thing is because uh, we can uh, have here thousands of numbers, millions of numbers, but generator will store only formula. And of course, like with range, we can use uh, indexes to return, for example, 99th element or the last element. So, once again, we can have the last element. Oh, okay. It's not subscriptable. Uh, please create list from L. Yes, it works. Um, maybe we can use next for L. No. Okay, uh, the range. Uh, can be subscriptable. We can use indexes, but this generator cannot. I will um, find how to use indexes with uh, such types of generators. But for now, just think about uh, this notation, like creation of uh, some formula to store a lot of numbers without uh, real storing them in the random access memory. Okay, and 15 minutes for the dictionaries. So this is a last type of uh, built-in data types in the Python. This is mapping types and we have a dictionary. How to think about dictionaries? We must at first uh, remind about uh, sets. It, they are really interconnected with each other. So assume we have some set 
of something inside. So here we have elements, different elements. And we know that each element is uh, unique here. So we can run len offset uh, s. It will return us the number of these elements. We can uh, get these elements using for cycle for element in set. We can intersect this set with another elements and so on. But just uh, assume that we want to store inside the set not only element, but some information according to this element. The best example is assume that we have a set with countries. So Russia, United States, I, I, I don't know any other than Denmark. And for each element inside our set, we want to store additional information. Let it be capitals. So we have a set of unique values. And for each unique value, we have another value of information. And we can call these types of objects keys. And these values of these keys and our new data type called dict or dictionary uh, we, we, we have a synonym that uh, calls hash table but in, in python we usually use dictionary it consists of pairs of key and value of this key and the property is that all keys inside the dictionary are unique. So let's create uh, some dictionaries. To create dictionary, we, we use uh, curved brackets like with set, but with another syntax. So for example, we have key A and value one for this, key B and value two for this, and key C and value three for this. So you can see that we have pairs that are um, divided by semicolon. So notation is this, we uh, sequence all pairs uh, by using comma and we have at first key, then semicolon and then value of this key. So what's wrong? Uh, assignment, assignment statement. So we have D, D is our dictionary. It consists of three keys that have three values. Dictionary is mutable. We can change the contain, uh, containment of the dictionary and we can change values of the key. How to get access to the key? We use uh, quadratic brackets and uh, the key name. So this is a value by key A. If we want to change this, we use the same notation. For example, well, and this is changed. Uh, so, uh, Let's create some dictionary that has some meaning. For example, uh, there are some names. Let's create a list of names. So Anton, Peter, I don't know, Vasya. And we have uh, heights. 
So this is an integer. And assume that we want to have one object that have a mapping between those uh, objects. So between the name and the height of the person. We can create our heights dictionary. using dictionary comprehension. This is pretty much the same as for mm, list comprehension. We can use name semicolon height or here we have tuple name height in and new function for us zip to to two lists name and uh, heights. So what's wrong? Uh, name height or name height? Maybe you missed s in heights at the first brackets after four. Because the variable is called, is called heights, not height. No, no, no. And, and uh, type uh, of parentheses is not that matter. Uh, what type? Once again. Parentheses, not uh, square, but. Yeah, no, this must be square. Square, okay. Uh, oh, we can, we can check it. We can check it diction dictionary. Okay, you, you are right. You are right. Yes. The thing is that square must be curved. Okay, uh, and we have our dictionary and we can access the data for each key. Um, I have no time to describe all the methods of each uh, built-in data type. We, we can find it uh, here using dir function, but I think I will cover all those themes in practice. So I will send you a materials about uh, built-in methods inside built-in data types. Because a lot of you already use, for example, string methods like uh, count, uh, like find. So if we have string A, B, C, D, and we call dear method of this string, we can find here uh, count, for example. And uh, you must not use your own code to count letters in the string. You can use the built-in function. This is very simple, but some, uh, some guys, know it and uh, the part of you don't. And the thing is that guys who don't know this, they have a lot of troubles with practice because they need to uh, code the program for searching characters inside the string explicitly. Okay, but I think I will cover it with a text in, in your practice. But the uh, purpose of the practice for me is to, to try to uh, teach you how to program. Uh, this is a very good solution, of course. Of course, it's uh, much more better than 
you can create because this method was written by professionals and they use efficient algorithms. But the purpose of this course is to teach you how to program. And I think that next uh, assignments will be, uh, will be created in such way that you cannot use uh, such functions. But may maybe you will try to find another way. So uh, I have no restriction of using any libraries, any methods that you know but I will try to compose tasks uh, such as you can't use such things because I want you to work with indices to understand how to uh, use iterable objects, how to use uh, uh, cycle constructions and other things. So, uh, a lot of words, but I forgot to uh, say about zip function. Zip function is a beautiful functions to work with lists. So how it work? Uh, it's called zip because it really looks like zip, uh, like zip line. So we have some iterable objects here, for example, list. And uh, another here, another list. And you know how zip line works. So one side, another side, and the carrot between. So this is a zip function. What it does, it creates as a pairs, a tuple pairs of black and red uh, elements one by one. So it takes first here and first here, combine them together and uh, give it to you. And then second here, second here, and, and give it to you one by one. So it's like zipping two lists together in the tuples and it will return, uh, assume that this was A, this was B. So A0, B0, A1, B1, and so on, AN, BN. And uh, you can read how it will work if uh, these containers will with different length. So it's really interesting. Okay, I think that I have a few minutes to answer your questions if you have. Uh, so is uh, enumerate function from our homework works uh, also as function zip in some case, or it's create a dictionary with index and the, the key? Okay. If you are comfortable with this, think like a zip function with the first uh, list inside consists of indices one by one. Okay. So it returns pairs with index zero, index one, index n, and the value of uh, your iterable. And the enumerate function is just a um, more narrow zip function. Yes, yes. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, I will try to prepare new practice for Friday. Thank you very much for your attention and goodbye. And uh, when can you observe our homeworks and say if we made some bad things that uh, Stepik accepted, but they are conceptually are wrong? Okay. Uh, the, the thing is that our uh, class time is really short and I have. Uh, proposal 
if you are interested, we can uh, cre create some meetings on the weekends, for example, to discuss any topics you want to know and uh, review your code, for example. So if you are interested in such meetings, we can think about time. Uh, personally, I am interested in it, but I think the best way to understand what about other is to create the poll in the Telegram. Okay. Okay. So let's do it in chat after your classes. Okay. So thank you. Goodbye, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay.